September 1992, an American spacecraft heads for Mars, a quest to the Red Planet. Less than a year later, as it tightens into Martian orbit, a mapping mission is underway. Familiar terrain for Mars has been much studied as man's next stepping stone in space. This is Mars in a small telescope, the image shimmering through Earth's atmosphere. And this is Mars from the early 20th century, drawings by astronomers who believed they were observing canals. And here's Mars from Earth orbit through the clearer, steadier eye of the Hubble Space Telescope, but no canals. Mars, bottom center, is the fourth planet from the Sun, its solar orbit almost two Earth years. They've much in common, but Mars is only half the size of Earth. It's also less dense, has weaker gravity, and a thinner atmosphere. But it does have polar caps, seasons, and a tilted axis. Without the cloud and atmospheric problems of the Venus probes, Martian explorers have delivered pristine data. They've photographed valleys and channels, morning frost and fog, great canyons, even a landslip. Here again, closer to the atmosphere in profile, and ice. A flyover reveals a thick polar cap. From Earth, the northern cap can be seen by telescope. In summer, the cap recedes as winter grips the southern pole. This southern cap is largely frozen carbon dioxide, the northern water ice. The caps are riven by great terraced crevasses. They've been formed, it's thought, as the climate has repeatedly cooled and heated, erosion caused by melting ice. From the poles outwards, the Martian surface has been shaped by wind and weather. And by impact crater, Mars is peppered with them. Volcanism has been important too. This is Olympus Mons, the biggest volcano in the solar system an appropriate springboard from which to fly this dusty, arid world. Hoving into view the three volcanoes of the Tharsis Ridge, to their west, Olympus Mons. Little wonder astronomers mistook the surface shadings for canals or continents, even vegetation. In fact, they're differing geological textures. Now, with data compiled from the American Viking probes of the 70s, we swoop on this desert landscape. First, a glide over Mariner Valley, the planet's most extraordinary feature, a rift that could stretch from coast to coast of North America. There's cloud below as we position for a swing over the Tharsis volcanoes. Martian cloud, like Earth's, is water vapor but there's less of it. Overnight frost, burnt off by sunshine, forms mist in the canyons.
Mars is chilly, but near the equator at midsummer, the temperature could reach 25 Celsius. A low level turn for a buzz down Mariner Valley. And there's our seer, the southern triplet of Tharsis. Pavonis. And Ascraeus. Three gigantic shield volcanoes, like those that sprang from the Pacific to form the Hawaiian Islands. Mars has two little moons, Phobos and Deimos, probably captured asteroids. Pictured by Viking, they are lumpy rocks measuring just a few kilometers. Phobos is heavily cratered. Deimos is smoother and smaller. Both have dusty surfaces. The Soviets had an ambitious plan to explore Phobos, a craft to drop probes on the surface. Sadly, just as their work was to start, contact was lost. This was the best image received on Earth. A Martian dawn in 1976. Within weeks of each other, the Americans had soft-landed Viking 1 and Viking 2. This is what they found. A lifeless desert, rusted red by iron oxide. Midday temperature, minus 30 Celsius. Atmosphere, carbon dioxide, 150 times thinner than Earth's. What they didn't see were the great dust storms that blow up on Mars. So big, they can be filmed from Earth as the whole globe is enveloped. But the Martian climate hasn't always been so bleak. Witness these river-like channels. And this teardrop, molded surely by flowing water. It's believed Mars once had an atmosphere as dense as Earth's and water galore. So why did the rain stop? One theory is weak Martian gravity, leaking atmosphere into space. No problem while volcanic gases replaced lost air. But when eruptions ceased, Mars was in trouble. The protective blanket of water vapor and carbon dioxide, which had trapped the sun's heat, disappeared. Mars became a desert, devoid of warmth and water. Future missions may yet detect water frozen beneath the surface. And mobile robots will search for life. It's a slim chance, but some biologists believe single-cell organisms could lie dormant in the Martian soil. Samples will be collected for dispatch to Earth. But who knows when man will land? Mars, of all the planets, is the closest thing to home. There are even 24 hours in a day. Next time in Encyclopedia Galactica, we go further out into space and visit the gas giants. Jupiter, the colossus of the solar system. Pictures from the Voyager spacecraft of the biggest planet and its many moons. And then Saturn, the celestial classic, with images of her rings, moons, and awesome weather systems.